and welcome everybody. Uh, this is the Seven Seas Cruising Association International Cruising Conference and Annual Meeting, our first ever event in which we have people from around the world uh, with us. I am Ed Kelly, your president for another three hours, ending my uh, 1,095 days on your board as a volunteer. And uh, soon I have a bottle of champagne in the refrigerator to celebrate shortly. Anyway, welcome. Uh, I have a short welcome here for you. Welcome to the Seven Seas 2020 Annual Meeting and Cruising Conference. We start with a wonderful a bit of frosting on the cake. We're going to uh, eat before we get into the cake. And we have Luke Calavut that's with us. Uh, and he's going to present how, why and how to easily create popular cruising videos. Anyway, uh, housekeeping, uh, keep your audio muted unless you uh, have used the raise your hand feature. Uh, I am having difficulty seeing everything, so there's going to be a lot that goes wrong today. Uh, I was telling Luke earlier, I've argued a number of cases before some of the highest courts, but I'm more nervous today trying to please uh, all my friends in Seven Seas and other cruisers that we have with us on board. Um, so please bear with us. Anyway, you can use the chat for technical issues. I'm assisted by my wife, Sue, who's also trying to help us monitor this. Uh, you can use the Q&A for questions. Uh, if time allows, at the end of a session, live Q&A will be conducted. There'll be at least a five minute break between each of our sessions for speaker transition and for bathroom breaks. And you're at home, so you can go whenever you want. So uh, <laughs> no problems as you come and go with your coffee. Uh, we'll try and keep it on, on uh, board going as we can. Our first speaker is Luke and he has a video that he will be showing and he had some an opportunity for questions before and after. He's going to make just a few comments at this time. Would you take over Luke and then I will start the video when you say start the video. Okay great thanks Ed and uh, hello to uh, all the attendees there is great. I thought that maybe there were very few people since it's noon so I don't know if you are going to eat lunch uh, during the presentation or you already eaten before. Here I am, uh, I'm in Malaysia right now on my boat is uh, about one o'clock in the morning so normally it's past bedtime but I guess today so just to introduce the subject so why and how to easily create popular our cruising video so that would be the webinar given today since i was not sure uh, one way that my internet will be good enough here from malaysia to be able to uh, do the webinar live and also because it's always better i think to prepare the thing in advance so since we speak about uh, making video i made a video about the webinar uh, i think it will be a lot of things covered in this about 50 minute video so uh, that video will be posted on YouTube later on so don't hesitate to watch the video again one or two times because you may miss many things the first time because you are going to have the audio but also video illustration and sometime if you get excited by looking at the video you may not uh, register what I'm saying and vice versa so anyway, it's a lot of stuff to cover, but 
no problem. You can see the video as many times as you like later on on uh, YouTube and on the uh, SSCA website. Why and how to easily create popular cruising videos? This is the title of the webinar that I will give you now on November 14, 2020 during the virtual GAM cruising conference of the Seven Sea Cruising Association. My name is Luc Calabo from uh, the sailing vessel Sloop Mouche. So if you never done cruising video before, I think you will learn a lot today. If you already done some video and you even try to publish them online and uh, you sometimes desperate to not have much more public or interest, I think you may learn a few little tricks here to help you get more public watching your videos. If you are a pro, you may not learn a lot uh, of new things during this kind of introductory uh, webinar, but maybe you can uh, offer some comments by the end of the webinar to share with the rest of uh, our audience. I started with underwater photography and videography when I was working in Club Med in 1984. Uh, that was the real beginning of uh, video with the first underwater sunny handicam housing and we went a long way in those last uh, almost 40 years by now uh, from uh, all VHS uh, format to high definition and even 4K now and technology continue to evolve so the quality of the images is better and better from creating simple slideshow to show to the club med guest in the evening after dinner to running eight different youtube channels with over 700 videos all produced by uh, jackie my wife and i uh, 42,000 plus subscribers and more than 15 million views uh, on uh, youtube so it's definitely a long way so I am happy today to share what I learned over those almost 40 years. Are you ready to easily create your own videos? Why are we thinking about making videos? Is the video going to be a souvenir for yourself? Maybe years from now when you will be if too old to cruise, you will have swallowed the anchor and you like to remember those fond memories of your cruising? Or is it to share with friends and family? They are always excited to hear about your whereabouts cruising all around the world in places they maybe uh, never will uh, go to. Or is it to share with a larger public? You don't even know who will watch your video. They can be people all around the planet and uh, could be even a way in that case to even earn some money. From small money, they will help you uh, buying some new equipment to uh, doing like a real business, like some cruisers before, having done lots of video, create a lot of following public, and uh, that following public let them earn money by advertising on their channel or even selling t shirt or anything else. So, some cruiser have using video to actually help them uh, found their cruising. So why does it really matter to know who is going to watch your videos? In order to create interesting contents for your intended public, you have to know what that public is going to be. If it's yourself and close friend and family, it's okay if your video looks like a vacation video or if it's a little bit amateurish, maybe not so well edited, or the filming may not be perfect, or the colors, or little details, doesn't really matter because it's only yourself, friends and family. But if you want to uh, make video for a wider public, well, then you need to kind of improve a little bit the quality, make it interesting to them. So amateur versus pro. Amateur, very quick, to do the filming and the editing, very little to learn and little or an inexpensive gear. A pro, then you will need to spend more time uh, filming, more time to learn also or to do everything and you will need more expensive gear. So I think the best compromise for most of us and the way to go for us cruisers is to go in the semi-pro category. 
what does it take to create semi-pro videos? Well, actually, not much more time than making a vacation video. And you can also find some inexpensive gear. Uh, you will have a lot more what I call the artist satisfaction to know that a wide audience will love your video. And like I said before, if you do good quality video, you, even, you will even have that extra possibility to earn some money as you develop a bigger audience. Like YouTube channel lets you monetize your video when you have lots of subscribers, when you have engagement, uh, when you have lots of new videos, people are watching, comment and everything. And that money could pay for some of your equipment or even could actually fund you cruising, like some people did before. So what gear do I need to actually film, to record the video footage? Well, it can, can be very simple as a phone. Uh, today, the quality of video taken with simple uh, phone, mobile phone, is actually much better than a big camera used to be 20 years ago. So, if it is, your actual mobile phone are probably capable of doing quite a good job. One thing to keep in mind with the phone is that if you use your phone like the regular way, you are going to get kind of a vertical video. Uh, so most other camera, action camera, camcorder and everything will record in an horizontal mode. So just put your uh, phone in the horizontal mode and then you will have uh, easier time mixing footage that you take with your phone and footage that you take maybe with different cameras. The next uh, way up, uh, and maybe complementary actually, is to use what we call the action camera. GoPro is probably the most known and the pioneer in action camera. Uh, GoPro are running about $300, $400 every time they get a new model. They always keep the price up. But you have lots of uh, uh, copies of GoPro at much cheaper price. And uh, when I had my first GoPro, I bought one of those copycat uh, cameras for less than $100 US just as a backup or to use it when I thought there was more risk to damage the camera. Action camera are great because they're very small. Actually, the, the quality of those camera can be quite good. They are mostly all H, uh, HD, high definition. Some are even 4K excellent camera you have the advantage uh, for most of them that you can have a different uh, wide angle uh, level so if you are doing uh, adventure hiking uh, whitewater rafting all kind of a uh, fun things that you like to film those are great because they are small they generally come with a waterproof housing you may need like a special housing to uh, go deeper uh, in scuba, but most housing are fine for snorkeling and uh, wild water rafting. Those action cameras also come with all kind of accessories, so you can mount them on a helmet or you can mount them on uh, on the top of your mast and have the camera down, so you get an aerial view of your boat going through a shallow pass or to some reef, by example. Uh, you can put them on a moto, uh, you know, handlebar, if you do a tour in moto you can put them in your car so those are great uh, add-on camera they are much easier to manipulate to hold on than just your phone ne next you have the HD camcorders you know Sony uh, camcorder Canon GVC those small camera they are tinier and tinier sometimes you you have a viewfinder sometimes the door just open up and you have a bigger image easier to see what you are filming those are probably better quality depending again uh, the the camcorder that you get and you can go all the way to way more professional camera but those will probably cost you quite a few thousand dollar but again uh, if you are doing it uh, more towards the pro than towards the amateur, you may have the finances to get those more pro camera. What gear do I need to edit my footage after I film? 
Well, in the old time you used to have big mixing table with connecting car cordor, the tapes, they were tapes and everything now, everything pretty much is digital and so with the digital age a simple PC or laptop with a fast processor is all what you need. Now you need the editing software and there you have a plethora of software on offer today from uh, free software and simple to learn the often come bundle with Microsoft or any kind of thing you can put in your computer even or on your phone to more expensive and complex ones to learn. So I think here again I think we want to be again balanced between the amateur and the pro the free and the simple program to learn are a little bit too limited to do what we want to do and the expensive and complex to learn are probably more than what you want to show off. And that remind me a story when I was doing uh, advertising video in Vanuatu, a beautiful uh, place to cruise by the way, after a few years of doing a documentary video, commercial video in Vanuatu, uh, we decided to continue our trip and uh, head on towards the Philippines. And so I had a tough time trying to find some people to replace me. And two or three times I got a new assistant the, that I was grooming to replace me for the business. The old gung-ho and everything was saying, oh, what kind of software are you using? Oh, your software is very simple and everything. I'm going to use Sony Vegas and Adobe software and everything, Premiere, and it's amazing what you can do and everything. And I say, okay, great, but uh, it's going to take you a lot of time. No, no, no. And to do the video that we were doing, they spent so much time trying to learn the software and go with the whistle and bells that they took forever to do things that with my medium of the road software I had long time finished with. And so they end up quite frustrated and by spending so much time and often they spend a lot of time to do a lot of uh, special effect and everything that actually it's kind of a distractor to do too much special effect we are remember when you do video editing you are not trying to prove your virtuosity at doing complicated things you have to think about the public and what you want to do is present something that makes sense to the public that they understand what is the thing film what is the message and everything and so you don't want to go overboard with doing way too much editing they actually will be distracting how can I improve my videos? Well, the first thing is to try to use quality uh, video format. So if you have any old VHS uh, camera or old regular 8mm or hi height, I think forget it. Uh, today the public is so used to have clear definition image on our big screen TV uh, even on a smaller phone and everything that if you film with anything less than HD or 4k is going to be looking not really great and people are going to see the difference and I know it's a drama because when you look at older professional video you look at Cousteau video uh, with the most expensive equipment at the time and everything and when it when it shows now on TV or on a big screen the quality looks so poor because the definition just wasn't there. So try to stay with HD or 4K, follow the, you know, the curve of the technology coming out of quality. One of the big advantage of the high definition that we have nowadays is that sometimes when you film you are far away from the subject. Uh, if you ever try to film a bird, like example in a tree or a monkey, far up and jumping from one tree to the other, good luck to get any good video afterward because you have been so far away with your camera. Uh, the subject has been going from one side or the other of, uh, of your camera angle, sometimes maybe out, but even if it's in. And if with the software, the great thing, 
is that with the software you can actually zoom into your image. But the more you zoom, naturally, the more the quality will decrease. So by luck, when you are filming with 4K, you can zoom a lot and still get really good quality. So that means that that will save you when you do the editing. You can actually uh, zoom in the editing on the monkey, follow the monkey when he go from one tree to the other and everything. And actually have a quite some nice footage. Same thing with birds and other stuff. So I would say try to keep the best quality. You don't need to go in 8K and, and you know with the most expensive because again when the technology is new you're never sure if it's going to be adopted and it's going to be quite dear at the beginning. So just stay one or two step behind the point and I guess HD is way popular so no way to use anything less than HD at this point in 2020 and you should already think about 4k because it's not that much more expensive to get action camera in 4k so that would be my advice for the quality of your image the next important thing to improve your video is to try to get steady shots Nothing is worse than someone stumbling around with the camera and you see the camera showing the feet of uh, the cameraman and then the next thing the sky and right and left. So steady shot is very important. So one very easy, very inexpensive tool you can use is a type of tripod. You can have a big telescopic tripod, you can have tiny little one, they make tripods now for a phone and for action camera. So you have all kind of tripods, so try to get one or two or three type or what in your arsenal of equipment because the tripod make a huge difference, especially if you want to do a panoramic shot, you are turning around, nothing beats a tripod. The other one is you can uh, try to get a steady hand, so practice. Uh, instead of holding the camera or your phone just with uh, the end of your hands, steady under your elbow, use your other hand as a base. Or you can put your elbow on a colon, on a rock or something and turn steadily will be much better. Now you have also those gyro mounts or kind of gimbal system uh, that uh, more and more you see professional photographer for still camera taking but works also uh, great for video where you when you are actually walking the camera itself can being on a gimbal and we all know gimbals stove on our boats at least the monos so we know the gimbal system and when you walk you won't get the shaken up action of somebody walking with the camera in his hand so those are gate system sometimes you have also stabilizing function in the camera itself but generally there is a trade-off with those so if you can uh, not use those stabilizing probably your image quality will be slightly better and the last uh, one now and not the least is to use drones drones have come a long way some have their own camera incorporated some drones can actually ca uh, carry your own camera as a payload so if you have a GoPro or action camera, you can use it to some drones. Uh, like I said, some drones come with their own camera. Make sure you have a 4K. Uh, those are nice uh, to use because you can great uh, aerial footage. You have also the possibility to have a sensor that you wear on your wrist or on your own body. And actually you can get the drone following you or anyone else uh, you want to follow so you can walk around like hiking and everything and you can get the drone circling around you taking different views uh, showing you know or you go in a in a hard path or when you are bicycling or biking or anything so it's lots of things to do with drones now one thing about drones is uh, many people say a good advice is when you buy your first drone buy two buy one cheap one just to learn and you probably crush it and break it so make sure it's a cheap one and then by the time you got your experience then you should have less problem with your more expensive drones now drones 
have all kind of uh, difficulties. More and more they are regulated in the different countries you go because some people had the issue with privacy aspect of filming with drones. So make sure you follow all the regulation and everything to use your drone or you may get your drone confiscated or be in trouble or anything. Uh, one thing too with drone I remember during uh, one of the rally uh, there somebody ashore sent a drone to film the departure of the rally boats and somehow the drone got interference from who knows what kind of electronic item but the drone never came back to shore to the journalist the other drone and it just crashed at sea and was lost so i would say as a cruiser if you are considering a drone i think it might be a good idea to do a, uh, to get a drone these at least splash proofs and they are splash proof drones more expensive but if it crash and is all wet at least you have a chance to get it back if it's not waterproof then bye bye the drone you have even some drones now they are actually scuba diving or diving drones where you can actually uh, put them underwater and they are filming the fish and go around and everything when you are monitoring what they are filming on your phone right on your boat so drones that's also uh, pretty exciting because you get those crazy views and everything but again it can be a big budget so maybe a reason for you to kind of monetize your channel maybe get some money to uh, afford those toys the otherwise maybe uh, will be over your budget another great way to improve your video is uh, paying more attention to the lights uh, try to avoid backlight when you're filming and it's quite tricky especially when you are inside and uh, you want to film something and you have a window behind with light or when you are outside and you film towards the sun uh, everything will kind of be in the shade so pay attention to backlight uh, also try to use spotlights whenever you can uh, you have tiny little spotlights they can be attached right on your camera or you could even have extra spotlights on tripods and everything when you are filming scenes inside lights make a big difference if you film underwater in order to get better color you could either use an orange filter on your housing uh, either inside or outside of the housing when you are snorkeling it will give uh, more uh, colors uh, if you are using artificial light then you don't want to use an orange filter but by using artificial light you are going to get a lot more colors and it make a huge difference now in your editing software you have also a function of uh, color correcting and color saturation and so you can actually if the colors are a little bit low render them more vivid during the editing and this is pretty obvious nowadays when you see documentaries with vivid colors most of it is not really natural but it's just post-production just to get a bigger color so but that means the public is used to a, v a very vivid color so it's very important to use the maximum light when you film and then to maybe do some color correcting afterwards. Another way to improve your videos is to get better sound. Uh, so pay attention especially to wind noise. This is one for us sailors either filming when we are sailing away or filming on our boat in a windy anchorage or ashore nothing is worse than get a big wind noise over whatever speaking is going on in the video or any other noise you want to keep uh, so a remote uh, microphone of good quality uh, can be also an asset that you can plug on the camcorder uh, wireless microphones like especially if you are doing interviews can also be a great thing one you can wear on yourself and one you uh, put it on your guest so the way to improve your video your finish video is to add ambiance music uh, soundtrack so the best is to use royalty free music and you can find a lot of free royalty free music online 
if you are using YouTube to post your video, YouTube also gives you a lot of royalty-free music that you can get from YouTube to put on your movies. You can also create your own music. If you are a musician or uh, you want to uh, use a music uh, production program, that could be a, uh, a way to go. Now, a word of caution or warning about using someone else's copyrighted music. Uh, we all did that a long time ago, but now with uh, internet sources, YouTube, Vimeo, all the different places where you could put your video, as soon that you upload a video, it's automatically analyzed for copyright. And uh, with the speed of internet and everything, it takes only a few seconds for YouTube to say, okay, this music, you use a copyrighted music, so it's okay. But either the royalty will be paid to the owner of the music, so that's fair enough. Except that if you have a 30-minute movie and you have 30 seconds of copyrighted music, the whole revenue of the advertising on that video is going to be all paid to the copyright owner of that 30 second clip. I don't think it's very fair, but that's the way it works. Uh, if you have several copyrighted music, then YouTube is going to somehow share the revenue between the different owner of those copyrights, but you won't get anything. Now, you may say that you are not going to get any re revenues from your video because you have only a small channels, only a few videos. That's true, but maybe one day it will be different. But there is more than that. Sometimes the copyright music owner actually restricts that music to be used in some countries. So you may use the music for Vangelis, Jean-Michel Jarre, Tangerine Dream, or other nice uh, background music, and suddenly the music is not going to play in, in a series of different countries. So that will be sad for some of your uh, public to see the video and not the music just because they are in a country where that music is copyrighted and cannot be played there. So my advice is to try now to always use royalty-free music. Another way to improve your video is to add short titles in your video. When generally, when it's needed by the viewer to understand. If you show some sequence of somebody making something, and for you it's pretty obvious, for someone else, the watch your video, it may not be obvious at all what you are doing or what someone is doing in the video. So a few keywords, a short title, may help the viewer to understand what's happening in the video. Short title can also give extra info. Uh, if you are filming a different attraction when you are cruising, uh, you, well, example, uh, a nice hike or a waterfall, nothing is more frustrating for the viewer this following in your wake to say, wow, that's a cool waterfall or hike, I want to do it, because he remember in your video, but then he has no idea what the place is called, and so he has no chance to ever get there. So, by putting the name of the waterfall, the name of the hike, maybe the name of the guide that took you there, will make a big difference for the viewer. They actually want to see with his own eyes what you film many months or years before. So, title can really help. Uh, titles can also be great when you interview someone uh, with a foreign language. They may be not speaking English so clearly that you suspect the viewer may not understand the English or because you have too much background noise, they will make it very hard to understand what the person is saying. With the title, with a rolling subtitle, you can at least put the keywords of what the person is uh, saying in the video. So that's also a very easy way to improve your video. And the last thing, but certainly the most important to improve your video, is spend some time editing. Suppress what is not good technically. That's the first thing. Whatever is like out of focus, uh, the filming is no good, get it out right away. 
then eliminate everything that is boring. So if someone is kind of uh, making like a, a little pottery and it takes 20 minutes, nobody is going to watch for 20 minutes the pot going on. So either you put it in fast motion that it takes only a minute or two or you just kind of use only short sequences showing the different levels during the construction. So you see it kind of getting. So what is too long, boring and everything you eliminate. And you will see that the longer you edit, your film gets shorter. But shorter films actually please the public much more. Because people have no shorter and shorter attention spans and nobody is going to waste time looking at technically a bad video, boring video, things that are too long and everything. So public is going to say cut to the chase or what. And if they are not interested, they are going to stop watching your video. And actually on YouTube is interesting. You can actually see uh, in the statistics, in the data, you can see what is the average time that the people watch your video. So if you have a video of 20 minutes and after a thousand view you see the, uh, the average time is 40 seconds well, from the 20 minute video 40 seconds that means that a lot of people just watch the first five or six seconds if it didn't catch their attention that's it they are out and they watch something else now I agree you may say well I don't care the people they really are interested will like it yes that may be but still nobody want to to watch way too long video if they are not very interesting so you have to keep the viewer interested in the video and now on the other end of the spectrum you can keep looking and editing your video forever and if you are a perfectionist you will never be completely satisfied and you may spend hundreds of hours on a 10 minute video and still want to do little improvements here and there with the sound with the title with the music with the image you can refocus and zoom there and everything and you'll never be finished that's not going to be good either because you are going to spend way too much time and it, uh, you are not going to get that much more viewer or anything so at one point uh, I think you you are okay so one way that uh, we do the editing here on Sloopmush the works really well for us I'm Mr. 80% so I do I after the filming we both of us film and I, actually that's something I like to mention too if you can film two people with two different cameras obviously the same kind of experience seen or anything now you have a huge advantage is that you have two different angles of filming plus when you are filming a ceremony or anything it's very difficult for one camera to always be at the place where the action is happening so by having two people going independently and filming when you do the editing later on now you get two different vantage and you will see that one camera maybe uh, missed some places by luck the other camera got the action so now you have less chance to have missed some important action that you want to show in your video but when both did film the same action and you have a different angle now it make much more interesting in your video editing to show the same scene from different perspective so it may be quite interesting. Also, uh, maybe one of the, the filmers, uh, one, uh, one filming, tend to kind of look at details. They are quite interesting. And maybe the other one take more like film the whole scene. So you get the ambiance. And both are important. So again, having two camera or even three, it's even a, a great thing to make more interesting video. But again don't be too perfectionist otherwise you will never finish and the public probably will not even see the difference at that point so again try to be on a on a good medium don't be too quickly finished with your editing but don't take forever either 
we finish with our movie, where can we publish it? Because we have to share it with the public. In the old time, we used to uh, make a copy on a VHF tape, VHS tape, and send it by the mail. Later, we end up uh, making DVDs, CDs, and DVD to send to the mail. Nowadays, technology makes it much easier. We can just kind of uh, send a video file via the internet. Now, video files are quite big, so you have to think about the size. So, they, you can compress them in different quality, and naturally, it will always be a trade off. Or bigger the file, or better the quality, but now you get a huge file. And if you compress it too much, now it's a small file, but the quality may be poor. Now, where does it, does it always matter? And does it matter for everyone? Well, not really. If you have a low quality video and somebody watches it on a very small screen like a phone, it might be okay. Or bigger the screen you will watch it, or worse it will become. So, if you want your video to look nice for someone that has a big screen, and uh, nowadays people go for bigger and bigger screen, I would say don't compress it too much. The good thing is, on YouTube, by example, they you will upload your video. So if you have a good quality video to begin with, a fairly big size for you, naturally, to uh, upload on YouTube, YouTube will automatically provide different compression of that film. And is actually the viewer will have the choice to watch the video in different quality formats. So if someone has a very good internet connection and maybe inexpensive internet connection, he may decide to go for high quality because then he can watch that video on his big screen TV. If someone is only going to watch on a small screen or as a slow internet or very expensive internet, they will be able to tell YouTube to watch the one on very low quality. And again, on a smaller screen, maybe okay. So that's a nice feature that you have those different quality. But if you upload a video on YouTube in poor quality, there's no way that YouTube is going to get a better quality, less compressed, because they can only work with what you give them. So YouTube, Vimeo, and everyone else that really encourage movie producer to uh, submit the highest quality because that way it kind of like give all the different possibility for the public. Keep in mind that uh, the people will be able to watch your video on YouTube and actually I think the majority of the viewers now are watching the videos on their phone uh, but maybe those are more the casual viewers uh, people uh, more interesting by the subject and everything probably will watch them on their computer screen or big TV screen. Uh, those video you may also uh, share them by, like I said, you can email them to someone and transfer big file via WeTransfer or Dropbox or other services, but you can also embed a little video player on your own website or on a blog or social media or you can share the link on website blog and social media so for people to click and then they just go online and they don't they either watch or download because you have also programs to uh, download uh, videos from the internet some uh, they are paid, some they are free, where you can actually download videos, uh, so it doesn't matter the speed of your internet connection. And actually, us cruising, that's what uh, I do. Anytime I see an interesting video on the internet, I just use a program called Internet uh, Download Manager, IDM is called, I don't think it was very expensive. You pay once in the lifetime for that program. And uh, I just download the video and it download on eight different channels at the time. 
if for some reason I lose the internet connection, it will resume uh, the video on load uh, the next time I'm back on the internet. And I download like that video, audio files and everything, and then I have them in the computer and can watch them on uh, any screen I want, can share them and everything. So that's also uh, a thing to do. Uh, YouTube is probably the biggest platform to publish your video where anyone can go see you. YouTube is free uh, uh, to watch. Uh, some people also put their videos on uh, Vimeo. Uh, there is another platform and there are other platforms sprouting all the time and everything to, uh, for your video. Okay, you created a great video, you upload it. Now, naturally, as an artist, your biggest satisfaction is to see a big public watching them and appreciating them. So, how can, what can you do to get uh, more people watching your video? Well, the first thing is a catchy title. Catchy title will get more views. A catchy thumbnail. Now, when you load up your video on YouTube, uh, they, YouTube automatically will uh, look in your video and will show you three little frames during your video, beginning, middle and the end, and that you can pick one of those. Or you can create your own little thumbnail photo that you can upload for uh, your video. So a catchy thumbnail also helps getting more views. Then you should have an accurate description. YouTube lets you put a description, I think up to 5,000 characters, so where you can describe what's in your video and everything. That's also a way to inform the people about what's in the video before they even uh, take a look or download it. Now share on social media the links to your video because if people don't know you have a great video, well, they are not going to watch your video either because they just don't know it exists. So you have to make sure you get your video link promoted to as many places as uh, you want. Then the other thing is answer the comments. And uh, the nice thing, YouTube, every time somebody comments on one of your video, YouTube send you an email. If you like to, you can sign off. But if you get the email with the comment of the people, it's kind of nice and encouraging to have people thank you for the video uh, because they just kind of recognize someone of their family or they were in the video or they were planning to go to the place that you film and now they can prepare it better or they went to that place before you did and now it's a nice souvenir for them or they have questions. They may ask you well, what is exactly there in the video and what did they do, what did they do. So if you answer the comment, you engage your audience and that's so a nice thing to do and it will give you satisfaction. If you want to know more about your public, well, YouTube gives you a lot of statistics. You have a lot of data available and it tells you how, how people can be tracked. But if you look as a creator in the Creator Studio on YouTube, you can find out actually the countries from which your videos have been watched, uh, the age groups of the people, all kind of different data and everything about the viewers. So it can give you a better idea of who is actually watching your video, how much, how much time they watch the video, which are your most popular video, uh, which are the video with the most likes or dislikes or comments. So lots of data at your disposition eventually to grow your uh, YouTube channel. And I'm sure Vimeo and uh, other platforms have similar data that you can access and make uh, your channel and your video uh, more accessible and more views and everything and help you in uh, designing your videos. We go back to our first kind of a question on this webinar because I think that's uh, what gives us the reason to do uh, the video. Is so why do we do recording of our cruising? Why recording or cruising? Well, filming while cruising can be actually quite enjoyable. And uh, sometimes it also kind of force you to look at things that otherwise you may not look because you may say, yeah, okay, seen that. But if you do a video, it gives you extra motivation to visit every single thing and everything because you want your video complete. So sometime doing the video make you actually more aware of things. Now, 
the reverse can be true if you only watch everything through a video lens you may miss something that you can see much better with your eyes so you have to do both watch with your eyes but also know thinking when you are doing an excursion a tour and everything that you are also taking video footage to show to other people later and so like i said it gives you extra motivation to see more things and everything and record it also recording your cruising is great to share with others your unique experiences how many people envy you to go around the world and see all those fantastic places and everything and many out of the way of uh, regular tourists and everything so video is the best way to share you can sit around the fire and tell stories uh, you can put a blog with comments and everything that people uh, read less and less because people don't want to read long things anymore you can put some photos and photos can be really fantastic but real good photos but video is going to be the most attractive because you get the movement you get the sound you get action and everything so video is the way that the public probably appreciate the most to share with you your unique experiences uh, your video recording will also help cruiser following in your wake and that's one of the ssca uh, uh, seven tradition is to uh, get uh, information to uh, people going in, in your wake and so when you are out in a boatyard you can make a little video showing in the boatyard same thing with marina same thing with excursion same thing with anything of interest to other cruisers uh, it also offer great entertainment to your host in the old time uh, when you went in the south pacific and they never seen an, uh, a camera taking a photo of the kids and showing them the photo on a little printout or no you take a photo of them with your uh, phone and then you show their faces there on the photo is going to be a great enjoyment to the kids there but now people even in remote places get more and more access to video uh, via internet and everything themselves so if you go visit a family and you share a meal with them or an excursion and you do a video they are going to be so excited to see that video of themselves uh, because they will probably never edit a video because they, that's way more fancy and time consuming so they may have a phone and film but it will be nothing compared to the video that you will have spent time editing putting some music comments titles and everything and they will cherish that video forever probably will show it to the next cruiser passing by and those cruisers are maybe going to recognize you in the video and they say well those are our friends so recording your cruising in video i think is a great way to enjoy your cruising better and to uh, provide a lot of fun and information to lots of people around the world thank you for your attention uh, if you uh, done some video please send your video to uh, the ssca here we will be happy to publish them on the ssca uh, youtube channel if you don't have your youtube or, or any way to publish them uh, if you publish your video on your own youtube channel or website or anywhere send us links to the video so we can also uh, look on the video and choose them as favorite video from the ssca channel on our uh, youtube channel so don't hesitate and uh, if you are participating yourself in any ssca events uh, you participate to a GAM, you participate to anything happening that involves an SSCA, please take your phone, your action camera, your camcorder, and do some filming for posterity. So you can either send us the footage, if you are not into the editing, and uh, we will edit the footage for you and make a movie in the archive of SSCA to share with all the membership, and uh, hopefully with this webinar you will be uh, into editing yourself so edit the video put your name at the end of the video put the date of the event and editing and let's publish it on ssca youtube channel for everyone so again thanks for your attention i hope you learn a lot today
Thank you very, very much, Luke. Uh, we really appreciate the excellent, excellent show. Uh, I need to get Luke back on the air here. Uh, just a moment. Um, yeah, I'm back. <laughs> okay, very good. If All you right, want to start, thanks, your, your, start your screen share and turn yours back on, that would be fine. That should work. Okay, well, since I don't have any webcam, I don't have really any uh, screen to share. So okay, well, I, I guess just your camera, your uh, your beautiful face at uh, at uh, one in the morning. <laughs> you won't see it because my uh, webcam is not working, and uh, oh, okay, the internet the internet here is very spotty. In fact, during uh, the video there, many times I lost internet. Uh, so uh, if I put the, if I had a camera and I put it, it even will be even worse because it's more data to go uh, through uh, internet. So hopefully we won't be interrupted. Uh, so if anyone has any question, I will be happy to uh, answer any questions. So I guess you can either raise your hand and uh, speak up, or you can leave a comment in the chat. I thank uh, very much uh, the one who uh, thanked me uh, for the presentation. I know Salvatore Salvia also uh, left a few uh, good advices. And uh, one thing uh, probably you know that as a CCA member, you have special discount uh, to look on the special channel with all the videos and everything. So look in the CCA uh, membership benefit for all the details. But that's a perfect opportunity to see videos made by Pro uh, over the years. In fact, you can already see a lot of those videos also in uh, the sixth Circum Navigator Summit, where Rob Dubin, uh, the creator of those videos, uh, was interviewed during uh, about their Circum Navigation. So lots to do. Uh, I hope that this presentation uh, brought you a few ideas. Like I said at the beginning, if you are a Pro, you probably did not learn much, but maybe you can share like Salvatore uh, done already uh, via the, the chat here. Uh, if you are a beginner, maybe you get a few tips to uh, what to do easily and cheaply to improve your video. And if you uh, thought about it, but uh, never really done video, hopefully this will give you. Uh, Glenn Holden has a question that he has asked. And uh, we're continuing with this. We will start our meeting at 1.30. I am uh, fumbling along as we go here today. So anyway, I appreciate your patience. Glenn Holden's question was, what editing software would you recommend to get started? And also for creating uh, better semi-pro videos. Uh, can you, um, are you online, Luke? It looks like Luke might have uh, lost. There he is again. Okay. Yeah, there I'm back. You see, I I didn't lie when I said I don't put the the webcam. Is the 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 internet is spotty. Actually, You've done a it's great funny. Job. Okay, thanks. Actually, the internet was pretty good here in Malaysia until about a week ago. So I don't know if they are also doing some work like they do where you are at there. Maybe they okay. are putting uh, 5G or better communication. But they I were guess... putting fiber optics. A truck rolled up in front of our house, believe it or not, uh, two hours before we were to begin and said, oh, we're putting in fiber optic cable this morning. So it would have knocked our whole presentation off today, I begged them 
not to do so. They said, well, we'll come back Sunday and do it then. But did you hear Luke Holden's question that I read to you, Luke? Yeah, anybody has any question? And yes, I'm glad, uh, Ed, that you uh, stopped those guys doing their work. And it's nice to, uh, to hear that they actually listen to you. So I don't know if yeah. you uh, threaten them to sue them or why, <laughs> but uh, that's good that they listen and they delay their work for a day. That's great. So Thank yeah, you. anyone with questions? Glenn, Glenn, Holden, uh, yeah. Glenn Holden's question is, what editing software would you recommend to get started? And also, after someone oh. that's been doing it for creating semi pro videos as they get a little bit more experience. Okay, well, like, like I explained about the video editing, it's like all of you, if you have a computer, it probably came, or even with your phone, perhaps, it came up with some uh, editing software. Those are generally fairly easy to learn, so the learning curve is pretty uh, short. But the results are kind of a little bit limited because they are really basic, basic. Uh, the thing to not do is to uh, get those very uh, expensive and complicated software right at the beginning because it may discourage you because you are going to take so much time just to figure out how to do basic things. So I use a program called Magix. Uh, seen in uh, in the video there i think it's cost about like uh, 60 us dollar so that's very uh, reasonable and it actually let you do many many different things uh, of with your image with the sound with different camera so that definitely one uh, i can recommend but again, uh, do uh, little by little, do easy film and everything. Also, before I forget, the film that when I went in the webinar, when you saw me doing the editing, uh, rest assured that I put it on high speed. So I think I speed it about 10 times. So it doesn't go that quickly to do thing, but I wanted to go uh, from beginning to the end of a short film. And that film, I think is about four, four minutes long. I just uploaded it on uh, my own YouTube channel uh, today. So if anyone is curious to see the result film of that very simple and quick editing on uh, that uh, film in the marina uh, where we are near, you could see that uh, on, uh, on the, my YouTube channel and the channel is Tropical Sailing Live. Tropical Sailing Live. Is that with no spaces in between? Any, any other questions? Yes, Luke. I was wanting to find out your YouTube channel, I assume is on youtube.com, uh, all run together. And is it Tropical Sailing Life with no spaces in between after yeah. you get on YouTube with the little uh, examining uh, glass i'm not sure that i'm not sure that will work i think if you type youtube.com slash in the name of our boat sloop mush that's the sierra lima oscar echo papa mike oscar uniform charlie hotel echo i will type it in uh, the chat box later uh, you should be get there but if you just uh, search in youtube and you put tropical sailing life uh, we should be number one. You will see that a little icon of a little skipper key black dog, like you saw in the video. And there, you Very know, good. we are on the channel. It's about 500 videos. Also, I like to comment about the quality of the video that you saw in the presentation. Some were filmed a long time ago. Uh, actually, they were filmed in, uh, in VHS uh, compact or in the early uh, eight millimeter film from Sony. And you can see the quality is way lower than in 4K. There were actually very few footage of 4K as I only got that 4K camera uh, less than a year ago. So, and I wanted to show a little bit footage from all around. Uh, and this, one thing and to this, also give you more. Yeah. And this video will also be shown and available on the SSCA uh, website if you go to the uh, uh, video area of the SSCA website. There are four other questions that are being asked. Uh, and uh, one of them is uh, that the person asked, do uh, you use we transfer to exchange big files? Is that correct? 
Yeah, that's one of the ways. We transfer uh, works pretty well. It's free. I think you can send up to two gigabyte uh, video file. So that's a good way to send video. Now, remember on YouTube, uh, if you have good internet connection, it's better to film in very high quality because you can upload it in high quality and then YouTube will give the choices to viewers to watch the video or download the video in any lower quality. But if you film in low quality, there's no way to, to improve your quality later on. So it's the same thing if you take photo and uh, on your camera, you can take uh, a, a photo of very poor definition or one that is taking two uh, megabyte or 10 megabyte, obviously, or higher the quality or long it will last. Uh, like I said in the film, if you look at the old film from Cousteau, uh, even with the best technology, at the time or whatever, it doesn't compare to what a phone does nowadays. So try to film with the best quality you can. Uh, Kingsley Ross uh, had recently uh, lost the drone in the water and the DJI people, uh, Kingsley had their lowest drone. Anyway, uh, uh, it went out of control and, and was not waterproof. But he asked, what drone are you using, Luke? What? Well Actually, the truth is uh, right now, so far, I use other people's drone <laughs> because okay. exactly for that reason. Uh, and uh, for, a, for a long while, uh, they didn't have any waterproof drone. And I think it's kind of crazy not to have a waterproof drone for a cruiser because you are going to do a lot of footage from your own boats and from wherever you are cruising. And so the risk to land is pretty big. And uh, while you may crash it on land and uh, may be able to repair it, if you get a non-waterproof drone to crash in the sea, that's it. And like I said, in the thing, sometime when your drone goes away, you may have some electronic interference, maybe from boats or I don't know which one, and your drone is not coming back. So, uh, yeah, I use all my footage or whatever from people, the other drone, and I say, well, can you do this for me? Or I borrow their footage with their authorization. But uh, one of those days I'm going to uh, get a drone. I think now I start to get some uh, royalties from uh, my YouTube channel that uh, will give me a justification to invest in a drone. Can you answer uh, a question from uh, 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 Jeff? What would be a good choice of which GoPro to get as a starter start? Well, I think if you are thinking about GoPro, you should get the latest model because uh, GoPro has a marketing way that uh, they're, whenever they come up with a new model, it's generally the exact same price than the, all the models before. And that's generally around three to 400 US dollar. Uh, so get the latest model of GoPro, you have all the whistle and bells, but then you could easily uh, take as a backup, a second camera, take a copycat of GoPro, they will be way cheaper. You can get 4K camera, they are quite good quality uh, from unnamed, unknown brand or what for maybe 100 US uh, with the case and all the accessories. So yeah, get the latest GoPro and get a backup on the other. If you are filming underwater, by example, or you are filming in a place where you think there may be a risk to your camera, use the cheaper one and uh, keep the GoPro for uh, when you have less chances to damage it or lose it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, and we have a, a question, Luke. Uh, Joan asks, can you post the link on the SSCA forum uh, to this uh, program? Yes, definitely I will. Uh, in fact, uh, any kind of uh, video that we put on YouTube are often uh, both posted on the Facebook group of SSCA and on the forum. Uh, I certainly post all the circumnavigation summit uh, links and everything. Uh, maybe sometimes John also post uh, all the webinars, SSCU and everything. So yeah, we have many ways for you to uh, know. Also in the bulletin, we'll probably put something about it too. Thank you. We also have a, another question. If you would spell the name of the video program you are using, 
Um, and and okay. after that, also, what is have you heard of, and what is your opinion of uh, video editing software named Da Vinci, like uh, uh, the Mona Lisa painter? Okay, well, the uh, the video editing that I use is called Magix, like uh, M A G I X, like it's Magix. You know, not CS, but with the X. If you uh, search on the internet, you will find it. I think uh, the company is Magix. Is uh, I think is based in uh, England or Germany, and uh, so you can uh, get. Uh, I think they have like a demo. You have like a 30-day trial of the program, and then if you like it, you just kind of uh, pay online, and uh, then you. Uh, uh, activate your version of sure. So you don't even need to get a CD or DVD in the mail or anything. Anything can be uh, digital. And uh, the, the Da Vinci program, I have no idea. That's a new one. I know the older one, very complex, like uh, the, the one called uh, Sony Vegas and uh, Adobe Premiere. And those, I tell you, it's quite a learning curve. But uh, the Da Vinci, I don't know. I will check it out. Okay. Uh, that seems to have exhausted the questions on the Q&A uh, section that we have. Uh, do you uh, have any other comments before we go? I have lost my regular cursor. Um, so uh, I'm a little bit uh, at a loss. I guess I can open chat. Maybe I have something more. Um, but do you have any other comments to make? Uh, no, nothing special. I see that Marina uh, Batam uh, shared there in the comment that she has used a GoPro knockoff called Aken, and they have been just as good, $50 each with everything. Yeah, that's amazing. For less than $100, you can get uh, the camera and uh, with the waterproof housing. Uh, the housing, be very careful. Most of the housing that you get uh, will go to five or 10 meter deep. That's about 30 feet. Sometimes you find them up to 100 feet. Uh, don't make the mistake, uh, the costly mistake that I did a few years ago when I was in Indonesia. I uh, travel away from the boat and I didn't think I will do any scuba diving. So I took one of my housing. It was only good to five meter, I think. And the housing look exactly the same and there's no inscription on the housing or anything because I was thinking maybe swimming in a river or... Uh, in a waterfall and then at the last minute I end up going in a scuba dive and uh, all excited I say well I'm going to film again and I went down and when I was about 15 meters suddenly I realized it was not filming and to my horror I saw the housing full of water that's why I lost my GoPro uh, tree that I had at the time uh, by luck I got the knockoff it was less than $100 so I could, de I could do filming but that's an expensive mistake. So there are some housing. They will go for a GoPro type of camera up to 40 meters. It's very difficult to find anything going deeper than that. Okay. And uh, I was told that if people Google uh, the three words, tropical sailing life, it will be the first hit that comes up to get access uh, to you on, on the web. And I wanted okay. to also share a couple of other comments. Uh, Michael Fix advised that he believes that Da Vinci Resolve, Da Vinci Resolve is a free and excellent software for almost nearly all levels for editing. Uh, Marina Bath Batham, Batham, <laughs> I keep screwing that up every time. Uh, anyway, uh, she advises that the Apple product, Final Cut Pro uh, X, FCPX is a very, is much more advanced program. So it has a lot of features, but like everything, uh, the more features added, the harder it is to use and the more uh, problems one can find. Uh, we were also told by some others that if you upload a video to YouTube, is there a way to set it up so that after viewing it, it doesn't move to some other video um, uh, uh, platform. Well, 
Yes, I think I think I think there is a way. I'm not sure. I think YouTube started maybe that kind of thing a year ago, where uh, the video start right away. But I think I I think you have a choice to do that when you upload the video. You can have it of starting automatically as soon the people get on the page or or not. Normally, I don't put that, uh, but some creator may do that. Uh, and uh, same thing with advertising. Uh, when you see advertising at the beginning of your video, sometime in the middle or at the end, sometime is the creator of the video that does it in, uh, in order to get some royalties. Sometime is YouTube that does it on, on the creator video and uh, they get the royalty. Uh, sometime also, that's one thing also that I like to repeat. Uh, my best advice is when you are using music soundtrack, make sure you use royalty free music because now the algorithm are so quick. As soon that you upload a video on YouTube, uh, sometime like uh, 15 seconds later, you get a thing, copyright strike or whatever you are using a non music. Uh, and it's kind of uh, very annoying because sometimes you film a live performance of dancer, they are using a copyright soundtrack and naturally you are using the, the soundtrack of the performance because it goes with the dancing and uh, because the AI recognize the, the original soundtrack play during the performance, suddenly you get penalized and uh, the, the, the copyright owner sometimes uh, just are happy to get their advertising or an advertising and they get the, the royalties, but sometimes they also make the video unavailable in some uh, countries or part of the world. And that means you may have subscriber or people who want to watch your video they cannot just access it because they are in a, in a country that is uh, blocked. Uh, Salvatore Salvia also advised that uh, video is 75% audio. And, and uh, akin to that, I will mention technically here, we are using a uh, Apple uh, uh, MacBook Pro and we're using its keyboard camera that it has here. And we have added a separate USB powered microphone called a Samson, S-A-M-S-O-N mic that we hook up to it. As we found it gave much better sound. I hope it's still putting out uh, well, but we've used that for several years because the sound otherwise was very muffled. But Salvador advised that uh, Voiceover narration is very good to explain the adventure or how to video and that it is 75% of the uh, presentation and suggested film yourself aboard the boat in a well lit marine environment, then have the option of using your voiceover cutting back to yourself on camera to transition between the B roll shots uh, with the descriptive shots of what you're talking about. But he said, be sure to use a good quality lav handheld or shotgun mic with a dead cat, which I guess is a fluffy covering that eliminates wind noise. Uh, there's one other new message and I'll get that and, and forwarded that on to you. And I guess that uh, is the uh, last that, uh, that I have and I see it's uh, about eight minutes until the end of your presentation, otherwise, when the annual meeting starts. So do you have any parting words before we uh, conclude this and we'll wait for the, uh, the meeting? Well, the parting words will be to uh, go for it. Uh, do video, don't be intimidated by uh, the technology. Uh, don't think it costs a lot and it's too much effort. And uh, if you do something uh, and instead of doing just for yourself and maybe your close family, where maybe you realize that you don't get a lot of public, if you do it just a little bit better, then you suddenly reach a huge public and it's kind of a nice satisfaction to uh, get comments from viewers all around the world 
people saying, oh, it's so great. I can see myself or my father or I can see my island that I have not been for many, many years. And so it's a lot of goodwill they come. And I think that's something they go really well with SSEA. Uh, it also can give inspiration for other cruiser in your wake to go visit those places that you visited because they see beautiful images. And that I, then I like also comment on the Salvatore is that the 75% the talk may be for some video, but I think sometimes it's nice also to a video with not too much talk and just let the image speak and the people to imagine for themselves. So, but anyway, so best of luck. And again, any video uh, you want to... Uh, post on uh, the SSCA uh, channel. If you don't have your YouTube channel and you just make a one-off video or you make a video of an SSCA thing, just send us the email uh, at SSCA and we'll post it. If you have a channel, uh, we will be happy to link to your channel also to put it on our uh, favorite channel. So like that, you get maybe more people coming on your channel. And uh, anyway, if you like to do some editing uh, for the SSCA, if you want to do any any event at all, they will be good to promote SSCA with the video. Just contact me. I will be there or what uh, to help you out getting things organized. I think video is the way to go. So thanks again for your attention. And I guess uh, I see that uh, I have some water leak there is pouring here. And the new windows that we uh, sealed, I guess, are leaking. So, oh, so no. much for the work this afternoon. So I wish you a good uh, general meeting there and good presentation. And I will look uh, and listen to the general meeting and the presentation when uh, I get them and I put them on YouTube. Uh, so we'll be a little bit uh, later than live. But anyway, Thank it you, was Lord. great to participate. Thanks again all for your participation. Thank you. And Luke, you go get some sleep. And uh, you and Lee, thank you so much. We have an award for you at our annual meeting that, uh, of course, we've communicated to you and we will share with everyone from our awards committee. Thank you again. Uh, okay. We'll be at rest until the uh, uh, 